Welcome back to None of Projects. Today we're getting back on the RV. Now the reason we haven't done any uh, kind of update in a while on this thing is because the heads have been at the machine shop getting magna fluxed. And as it turns out, both these heads are cracked in pretty much every cylinder. You can see right here the magna flux powder in the crack. It's cracked from this intake valve into the spark plug hole. Got the same thing over here. Kind of disorienting to look through the camera. You can see right there. Over here as well. And even over here. This said it's not as obvious. I think the powder may have been disturbed. Oh, here, here's a good one. There you go. So yeah, these heads are pretty much garbage. Uh, there's not a real way to repair that, nor is it worth it on these heads. And to get another good casting, these are oddball heads. They have the water passage going through here. Most heads have an exhaust passage, so these are hard to find. And I think the machine shop said they found one on the East Coast, and it would be like $1,000 out the door for a good set of these, which is more than I would want to put into that motor, given that it's obviously been abused, so overheated, whatever, who knows. So that's unfortunate, but on the flip side, we are going to have some good content, because what I'm thinking is we will pull a Junkyard 59360 Magnum along with the 46RH, or actually RE, I guess, depending on the year, and we're going to swap that in there. So not only is it going to have a more modern motor design, still based off this platform, obviously, it's also going to have overdrive, and I'm thinking we may retain the fuel injection, which could be a nice thing to have. Plus, it's also going to be getting a 5.9 over the 318, so it should have a nice little bump and torque. Since we're going to have to pull out the old motor and transmission, let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. I did anticipate this, it not fitting out. So I think we're going to probably pop it off of the jack and try to drag it over. Alright, that wasn't fun, but we got it out. Next we need to get the motor out. I don't know if we're going to go out the bottom or top, but we'll figure it out. Alright, so with the transmission out, let's go ahead and get the engine removed. I'm going to need to take off all the front accessories so that we can get it free and I'm thinking probably the easiest is maybe <clears throat> getting a few people putting a couple straps around the block you know maybe through those motor mounts and then one bolted to the head bolts or something like that and then we'll just lower it down and work it back drop it onto the ground. I think that might be the easiest way but we'll see. Let's just get those accessories off first. Alright, all the accessories are off. Car steering pulley is just sitting there. It's not attached anymore. So I think we can just start removing all the electrical. Well, actually, it's mostly removed. Um, it may be smart to pop the distributor out just so that, uh, you know, we have a lower profile. And because I don't want to break it, it's still good. But after that's out, I think we just need to get it supported and then pop the motor mount bolts out. And then as soon as we get it off those studs, we can set it back down on that axle down there. And then um, just lift it and bring it back. But I don't know, we'll see if it's pretty heavy. Okay, we'll find a new one. Okay. Okay, maybe now we can get the transmission job. Oh, the engine getting ready to fall.
Okay, watch out. There it goes. Alright, we're here at the junkyard. Uh, I think we found a good donor. Two wheel drive, 5.9, with the transmission we need. Uh, we're gonna just look it over real quick, make sure everything's good, and then pull it. Alright, so this is really the first and only um, 5.9 two wheel drive automatic that I found so far. Luckily, it looks pretty good. The only kind of demerit on it is the intake was open for who knows how long. So, we're gonna have to make sure the engine is still good. Uh, it rained here a couple days ago, so. We'll see, if not, whatever. But um, there's a lot of documentation inside on oil changes. Looking at the dipstick, this is a great place to check. You can see it's not all varnished up. This is actually really clean. A little bit of varnish right there. If it's an oil burner or if it's just a really worn out motor, you'll see oil varnish all the way up and down this dipstick. Everything is good to check. Obviously, you want to make sure it spins over a couple revolutions. All the valves are free. Uh, crank is free, obviously. Pistons are free. So I'm going to grab the ratchet and we'll do that. I should have mentioned this earlier. We know this is a 5.9 because it's got the thicker damper. Um, also, there's a casting number on the side of the block that'll say 360 if it's a 5.9, 318 if it's a 5.2. All right, so it looks like it's a little easier on the trucks. This Durango, it's not really possible. I'm sure you could if you really wanted to, to get the this ratchet on there. So I think I'm going to grab a pry bar and we'll just go right off the crank pulley. I don't know how well is it going to work. Let's see. Maybe not very well. <laughs> Alright, so I can't quite get in there, so we're going to get the uh, rad fan shroud out of the way. Now, usually when you're pulling a junkyard engine, you can just slice and dice. It makes it really fast. Uh, we want to keep the wiring harness because I think we're going to retain the EFI. So I'm going to have to kind of carefully remove all the plugs as best as I can. So it's going to take a little longer, but it is what it is. So while I'm pulling the rad hoses, this is a good time to mention this. Another really good indicator of an engine's health is the kind of coolant that is in it. In a neglected engine, you'll a lot of times see really rusty, brown, nasty coolant. But you can see this has nice green coolant. So that's a good sign. Obviously, if it's straight water, you want to avoid it if you're in a freezing area. And also, it just makes the interior of the engine rust really bad. All right, I got this fan out of way a little bit. A little easier to get this in here. Try and get the ratchet on the crank fully. It's definitely building compression. You can see how it springs back. That's a good sign. Okay, well, it's going good. So, I mean, I think we're gonna pull it. We're gonna go through and refresh it anyways, so, yeah. Another good place to check is the oil cap. Worn out engines, you'll see a lot of build up varnish on there. This one looks pretty clean, so, I think we got a good one, hopefully. Alright guys, made a lot of progress this time. We got the old engine and transmission out and we also went and got the new drivetrain from the junkyard. Next time we're going to be tearing down the engine and inspecting it because we're going to be doing a refresh on that. And eventually we're going to be tearing down the transmission because we're going to do a refresh on that as well. So I'll see you guys then.